assalamu alaikum dear students today we are going to discuss lecture 5 of geotechnical engineering 1 uh, today the topic of our discussion is soil particle sizes uh, so let's begin soil particle size the sizes of the particles that make up soil vary over a very wide range. You've got larger particles, intermediate size particles, and very small microscopic soil particles as well. Soils generally are divided into gravel, sand, silt, or clay, which is known as soil. Okay. Uh, the bigger particles are known as boulders or rocks. They are not considered part of soil. So, soil we already discussed that soils are basically weathered material uh, from the rocks and they are smaller in size than boulders and rocks. So, the largest particles are gravels and the smallest are clays. So, depending on the predominant size, and the particles within the soil it can have both larger size particles as well smaller size as well or one particular type of soil as well okay so in some areas you may have mixed sizes in a given soil and in some areas you may have pure sandy silty or clay soil or gravel as well okay so on the scale if you look at the soils if you typically pick up uh, a piece of a gravel it will be of a size 2 millimeter and larger okay it is a scale given on the inches uh, it is uh, also given and on the millimeter is also given over here as well so if you have gravel it will be 2 millimeter and greater in size and you can pick up gravel in your hand gravel pieces you know you just uh, can find them in the river beds as well you can see where they are they have been used in the concrete as well they are used in the road construction as well so are very common materials okay then coming to the sand compared to gravel they are smaller in size okay typically uh, you can see the one millimeter has been represented over here so up to one millimeter their size is there we will discuss various ranges in a while but this is a typical comparison over here okay then silts will be smaller than sands okay silts if you look at silt they look similar to the sand uh, they have similar origin as well they are produced by mechanical weathering of feldspar quartz and sandstone but they are very smaller in size okay so in comparison to gravel and sand you can see the size of silt okay uh, then the smallest particle size in the soil is called clay okay uh, the clays are usually not visible to the naked eye so you will probably need a uh, scanning electron microscope for their visualization here is the scanning electron microscope image of clay okay Khawra, which you commonly refer to as uh, you can see this much size is represented as 5 micrometer on this scale over here so one micrometer is basically millionth one millionth of a meter so if you take a meter and divide it into a one million pieces and take one piece out of that then that will be one micrometer so five micrometer has been represented over here so if you look at this particle this is uh, approximately five micrometer over here you can see okay or 0.005 millimeter so very very small size 0.005 millimeter will be very small on this scale okay so clays are the smallest uh, commonly of uh, the particle sizes <clears throat> so because the particle size description is very very important for determination of a type of soil uh, so to describe the soils by their particle size 
several organizations have developed particle size classifications okay classifications on the basis of classification they place soil in different classes then well, gravel sand silt and clay okay so based on size they measure the size using the various devices which we will discuss later on and once they know the size of a particular particle on the basis of that they can call it clay silt sand or gravel the table 2.3 uh, presents various classification systems which are commonly used MIT or Massachusetts Institute of Technology classification then we have USDA or US Department of Agriculture classification we have got American Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials classification or ASTRO classification this is commonly used for roads and unified soil classification which is uh, basically previously known as US Army Corps of uh, Soil Engineers Soil Classification or USBR US Bureau of Reclamation Soil Classification as well which is commonly used by civil engineers so all of them they have divided the soils in various groups in various classes based on their particle size for example MIT classification says that if the particle grain size is greater than 2 millimeter okay if it is greater than 2 millimeter then it will be considered as gravel okay so remember 1 inch has 25.4 millimeter okay so 2 millimeter you can imagine how much 2 millimeter will be on scale on scale so it will be roughly the size of this pointer which i am showing you on the screen so the size greater than 2 millimeter will be considered as gravel according to MIT soil classification which is one of the oldest classification system which we have uh, then sand was classified as having size between 2 millimeter and 0 0.06 millimeter so the particle size is greater than 0 0.06 and smaller than 2 millimeter will be considered as sand okay then we have silt the silt size varies from 0 0.06 to 0 0.002 millimeter okay so if the particle sizes are greater in given soil if the particle size is greater than 0 0.002 millimeter and smaller than 0 0.06 millimeter then that will be known as silt okay any particles which have size less than 0 0.002 millimeter according to MIT soil classification system that will be considered as clay or clay sized particles okay we will discuss later on what is clay sized particle that we will discuss right in the end of this lecture sometimes they are clay sized particles which have, uh, which are in the same range uh, as per their size in the clay but their properties are different than clay soil okay clay soil usually have plasticity elasticity which we are going to discuss later on okay <clears throat> then USDA or US Department of Agriculture uh, their classification uh, commonly USDA soil classification later on we will see one of their triangular shape soil classification system as well they commonly deal with sand silt and clay okay uh, we will do classification of soil based on this we will do some numerical problems on that as well so this is almost similar to what we previously discussed in MIT the only thing is that over here you can see in case of sand uh, the particle size is greater than 0 0.06 mm was considered as sand in case of MIT over here it is 0 0.05 okay and same is 0.006 is 0.005 over here as well uh, for the clay the classification remains same so the only difference is the only slightest uh, difference in the lower uh, range of sand and the higher range of the silt okay then uh, very commonly the the soil classification used by civil engineers is astro soil classification and USCS soil classifications. These are commonly used by civil engineers. Uh, if when we are dealing with the highways, construction of roads, usually we use astro soil classification system. 
when we are dealing with the dams embankments building foundations uh, retaining walls then we usually use unified soil classification system to classify our soil for use in the particular type of structure so over here uh, the range the lower range for the gravel uh, remains same uh, they gave the higher range for the gravel which is 76.2 mm any particle size which is smaller than 76.2 mm and greater than 2 mm will be considered as gravel okay so 76.2 mm is basically 3 inches okay so any particle size smaller than 3 inches will be considered as gravel smaller than 3 inches and greater than 2 mm okay so if it is greater than this it will be called boulder okay it will not be gravel anymore so they give the upper limit as well for the gravel over here uh, then uh, it says uh, astro says that any particle size between 2 mm and 0 0.075 mm will be considered as sand okay and between 0 0.075 and 0 0.002 will be silt and less than 0 0.002 is will be clay okay uh, while uscs unified soil classification systems uh, give uh, the size for the gravel being 76.2 and 4.75 millimeter okay so if, if the particle size is between these limits then that will be called gravel between 4.75 and 0 0.075 then that will be known as sand and anything which is less than 0 0.075 is known as fine okay fine material and the fine may include silts and clays both okay uh, why is this important and what is 0 0.075 0 0.075 is the opening size of sieve number 200 which is the smallest sieve we usually commonly used uh, in the laboratory okay you will do the sieve analysis and you will see the smallest sieve available with you will be 0 0.075 micron uh, uh, millimeter size uh, or 75 micron as well okay 0 0.075 millimeter is equal to 75 micrometer okay or you can put uh, uh, over here four zeros and then seven five and then you can write meter with that as well okay so sieve number 200 size is 75 micron or 0 0.075 so anything which passes through sieve number 200 uh, then we call this as fine soil okay in soil mechanics <clears throat> so you will be commonly dealing with this type of classification and we will be discussing this in much more details okay so <clears throat> that is basically what we are going to discuss in the minute. so here is the same thing uh, being displayed uh, in a graphical form uh, the MIT side classification system uh, you can see over here uh, this is 2 millimeter uh, anything which is greater than 2 millimeter that is considered as gravel and then between the 2 millimeter okay over here you can see uh, and over here you can see this so this is the range of gravel this is the range of sand and this is the range of clay where well, let's can go further on this side as well uh, for the MIT uh, for QS Department of Agriculture you can see over here uh, there is only slight difference in terms of uh, the sand sizes as I mentioned over here okay uh, being 0 0.006 over here uh, we have 0 0.06 over here and 0 0.05 over here okay and similarly uh, for astro you can see over here they have given the upper limit as well which is 76.2 uh, millimeter over here and the lower limit is 4.7 so uh, similarly you can see over here the range for the sand and range for the uh, clay while over here you can see the uh, unified soil classification system gravel sand and then silts and clays okay you can say they are they are all fines so uh, they are basically combination of silt and clay you can see over here okay so anything smaller than 0 0.075 millimeter will be considered as either silt or clay okay or fine soil common <clears throat> okay so moving further into the properties uh, first discussing sands and gravels how their structure is 
how they are formed and what are the typical properties of sands and gravels with respect to their size okay gravels are pieces of rocks okay they are basically from mechanical weathering of quartz and feldspar okay so when we break quartz and feldspar mechanically that is we do not change their properties through chemical weathering so they will retain the properties of their parent rock the only thing is that they will be smaller in size okay so there will be no chemical change in the composition okay unlike the uh, clays which are made of chemical weathering which we will discuss later okay so other minerals grains may also be present sometimes in these uh, sands and gravels as well figure 2.8 shows the scanning electron microscope uh, image of some sand grains you can see over here at larger resolution uh, one millimeter is this much over here you can see and uh, you can see the particles of sand okay they look bigger to you over here because obviously they are under scanning electron microscope so they just have placed them on a black sheet over here you can see and you can see them they are like uh, uh, particles with having more rounder shape which you can see over here uh, this is further zoomed in image over here you can see uh, some clay particles over here as well cling into the side okay so you can see the example over here the, uh, the sands are more rounder and the clay particles they are more flaky okay so the larger grains shows rounding okay that can be a result of wear during the transportation by wind and water when when uh, you break the aggregates their shapes are more uh, edgy they are more sharp edge edges okay uh, like just like you get aggregate from crush plant you see their edges are more sharp but when you get aggregates from the river beds you see they are more rounder in shape because why they during the transportation by wind and water okay in that case in case of uh, rivers etc they are uh, taken by the water so during that transportation because they have been rolling down the terrain they become more rounder okay so the, you can see the rounded shape that is because of that okay so when uh, it's freshly weathered it will be more pointy uh, shapes but the ones which are being transported by wind and water uh, they roll down etc and during that time the shape become more rounder like you can see over here okay uh, and you can see some clay size particle over here in the mix as well okay so uh, typically the sands and gravels their shapes are similar only their size is bigger the gravel is a bigger size and the sands are of the smaller size okay so sand gravel and silt okay they are uh, all three of them they are as a result of mechanical weathering of quartz and feldspar okay i'll show you the few more uh, real life images of quartz and feldspar later on as well okay uh, so because there has been no chemical changes during the weathering during their removal from their parent rock their removal has occurred because of the temperature changes or because of the wind action because of glacial action etc various uh, weathering uh, actions which we discussed last time okay so they retain the properties of their parent rock that is they are strong quartz and feldspar are stronger rocks okay so they are strong and they are basically uh, they've got they carry no charge so they are basically usually inert okay they they don't carry any charge uh, which means that they will not attract water and they will not exhibit plasticity as in case of clay which we will discuss later on okay so sand gravel sand and silt uh, they are basically result of mechanical weathering and they will be uh, stronger materials okay especially sands and gravels okay so they will uh, exhibit uh, different properties than clay uh, while clay is as a result of chemical weathering of parent rock these are result of the mechanical weathering of the parent rock okay that's why they are mainly different from clay then coming to silts okay after discussing sands and gravels coming to silts you may have seen silts 
uh, on the sides of the river banks and especially when they are cleaning those canals you may have seen they take out silt out of them okay lekha which we call okay uh, when you look at silt uh, in its wet form it looks more like a sand but the difference between sand and silt uh, you can easily determine because their origin is same uh, their color is almost same as well in case of sand and silt the only thing is that the silt are very smaller in size as compared to sand which we already demonstrated so anywhere if you have wet silt lying down and wet sand lying down how you can tell the difference if you take the wet sand in your hand uh, and you close your hand okay it will resist it will not come out of your fingers but if you take a uh, wet silt in your hand and you press it in your hand it will come out between the fingers okay so it will be slushy type of material uh, which indicates that it has got less shear strength and smaller particle size compared to sand okay uh, so commonly uh, they are uh, found in the water bodies in the canals in the dams etc so silt is being carried down uh, by the water okay and deposited uh, which we uh, usually remove uh, in with respect to their particle size they are small okay uh, and they are more flaky in shape compared to the sands and gravel okay something which is got plate like structure you can see over here this area is larger but the other dimension is small okay this is called flake okay you may have heard about corn flakes okay so corn flakes is like this as well dalia jo aap khate hain so the corn flakes type shape uh, they have okay silt so their shape is also different than sands and gravel uh, they are usually micaceous okay uh, you may have seen mica Uh, from mica we usually you may you may have observed this is used for the uh, thermal insulation as well you may have seen mica in the filament of your iron as well uh, day to day iron which you use if you take out the filament it is made of mica okay mica sheets will be there because they provide better temperature insulation okay uh, so they will be of resembling of mica but obviously this is bigger in size the mica pieces intact okay while silt will be very smaller in size okay but if you look at under the electron microscope scope it will be uh, like this okay then coming to clays clays are mostly flag shaped microscopic and sub microscopic particles of mica clay minerals and other minerals okay they will be microscopic or sub microscopic sub microscopic particles are the one which you can observe through scanning electron microscope okay uh, so last time we discussed that the sizes are uh, 0 0.005 micron or smaller here you can see uh, 5 micron okay or 0.005 mm it is this much so you can see this particle size this is one flake of clay so they are all lying on top of each other which you can see so they are not circular or round in shape uh, which you can see in case of sand this is sand particles then we have silt particles okay you can also visually see them okay anybody with they have a good vision you can see them but in case of clay the particles are basically longer in one direction and platy in another direction so okay they are just like plates being placed on the top of each other okay so visually they may look similar to sand and uh, silt only their size looks smaller but over here you can see their structure is different as well okay that's why clay have different properties than sands and gravels okay and this is the purpose of this whole discussion okay later on we will be discussing the properties of those materials and we will say the sands are better materials than clay because of the these reasons etc and clay have got less permeability because of that reason etc so you can clearly see the clays are got very small particle size so that's why they will have less uh, capacity less shear strength and also they will have less permeability as well the water cannot pass 
easily through clay compared to silt and sand okay so uh, in addition to that clays are result of chemical weathering of parent rock okay so when the parent rock is chemically weathered because of that they carry electrical charge okay which causes plasticity of the clay okay this is the principal difference between silt sand and clays okay plasticity you see you you make those spots from the clay okay and if you put water in a clay uh, it becomes moldable okay this property is known as plasticity okay so uh, when you add water with clay particles because they are electrically charged they will attract water and then they will exhibit those small forces combining together they will give you plasticity through which you can basically mold them so something which uh, some clays with lesser plasticity plasticity they will show cracks which you can see over here okay and if the clay has got more plasticity it will be a perfect pot which you can see over here okay so some of you may have experience of pottery or you may have seen pottery being uh, happening okay so uh, the soils uh, sometimes some clay got more plasticity some got less plasticity etc so we'll be defining them based on their plasticity later on okay but this is the main difference you can see over here that because clay particles carry electrical charge so they can attract very small electrical charge okay which we will discuss later on in clay mineralogy because of that they attract moisture water and they become plastic okay you cannot make pots out of sands and gravels or silts even if you add water because they are uh, uh, inert they don't carry any electrical charge and they do not attract water molecule okay just like clay does so clays have got plasticity and the other don't okay so in addition to that one other thing which i discussed last time uh, in the in the beginning that some particles may have size uh, between the clay range that is 0.005 mm to 0.002 mm okay which is the particle range of clay but they may not exhibit any plasticity they may have zero plasticity okay and being electrically inert so if you add water into them they will basically not exhibit any plasticity and you cannot mold them those particles will be known as clay sized particle so sometimes you can basically weather quartz feldspar or mica into a very small pieces okay into a very small pieces if we mechanically grind grind them okay there are very various weathering actions which can grind quartz feldspar mica in a smaller pieces so somehow if we mechanically not chemically but mechanically weather those rocks into the range of clay size particles they may be small and they may be passing through sieve number 200 as well they may be very small as well but they will have no plasticity which means we will not be able to mold them by adding the water so they will be basically non plastic materials and they will be called clay size particles okay they will be in the range of clay size okay but they will not be actually clay so they will be non clay soils or usually called as clay size particles as well okay so this is this is basically a crystal of a quartz larger size piece which i have shown you okay quartz look like this hopefully sometimes if we get time uh, during this session uh, we'll go to uh, ncg lab national center of excellence in geology uh, in their lab they've got all those rocks pieces on display so you should know what is quartz what is feldspar and what is mica okay so when we are there uh, we will demonstrate these to you and they are like very beautiful crystals like just like diamonds which you can see over here so uh, intact quartz looks like this geology is very fascinating subjects you have studied geology in second semester although physically you may not have seen rocks yet uh, in the field in that detail but hopefully in the next semesters we will we will take you on field trips or we will uh, take you to ncg lab and we will show it to you uh, physically as well okay so in next class we will discuss about clay mineralogy okay uh, the clays have three distinct different types 
so you may come across clay soil in various regions and they may be in different colors and they may exhibit different properties some may resemble shows some may show cracking on drying some may not show cracking on drying like over here this is a dry clay as well this is dry clay as well this is totally cracked while this does not show much cracks as well so all those uh, properties will be discussed in next class in clay mineralogy that what are the various mineral forms of clay there are three distinct mineral forms of clay uh, in which the clay occurs okay which is kaolinite mottmurolite uh, and elite so we will discuss them in detail inshallah in the next class so thank you very much for the listening and that is it for today thank you